borra kama ta sinot kotora e kata shondo no borra paka ta e tapo u i kata shondo no ora magare e ta semoto kota e kasamoto pakin aramoko e rabaka a. Welcome back to Study with Grace, a Bible study of biblical truth. Remember, this class is not church. Church, church. Where we dialogue up in here. This is not a monologue. This is not something you're accustomed to. You got to have an understanding of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. You got to truly know what this cross really means. Why did he hang on this tree? Jesus hung on that tree to take the propitiation of the wrath of God. Period, Jesus Christ pours down 21 judgments of his wrath on earth. So Jesus saved us from that wrath. But it don't stop there. You're forgetting the most important thing. God raised him from the dead. He is God. And when he rose from the dead, your sins got a cone for him. Y'all see how important this resurrection is? Christ rose from the dead. And he poured out his spirit on our flesh. So it's our job to share the gospel. So it's your job, my job, everybody in here job, to know about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And not only know, but share it. Share it. Share it. Yes. There you go, Alan. Man, I look, I enjoyed that opening. That was a that was the best opening I've seen in a long time. The best opening. You on there doing that tongue, that fake speaking in tongue mess that these people do in this charismatic Pentecostal movement. They just get up and fake speaking tongues like they, oh, God is in me. The Holy Spirit is in me. And watch this, y'all. I can speak in tongue and pray in an unknown language. Call out that wickedness, Alan. I'm going to call it out for you. Call it out. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15 to study. Study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, you had the, the guy on there. I don't, I don't, I'm new to this. I don't know these people. But you had some guy on there, and, and he said, hey, man, if you just give the Bible to somebody and, just, just you know, let them read it, you know, without – you know, read it, read it in from, you know, the Hebrew and Greek and all that. Um, uh, what will they get out of it? Paul said to study that. He didn't say you just to read it. He said study it. So you have to study the scripture. You have to rightly divide. And Ella, I'm going to lie to you, man. You studying, bro. <laughs> you studying. But the thing is, you out there by yourself. You by yourself. And I'm here to tell you, you're not alone. You are not alone. But I just, I just, listen. You apologize for something that you shouldn't apologize for. You told the truth. You told the truth. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you that speaking in tongues is a prayer language. Matter of fact, the Bible doesn't tell you to have a private, secret prayer language in tongue by the Holy Spirit. It don't tell you that at all. But these charismatic Pentecostal people are being deceived and tricked by the many antichrist spirits that's been going on since Paul and John days, getting people to move away from the truth. Alan, you said this isn't a salvational thing. It is. Because anytime you attach the Holy Spirit to something, anytime the Holy Spirit is attached, salvation is there. You see what I'm saying? Salvation is there. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and 13 that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, Right? It says that in Ephesians 1.13 that, that we should trust, trust once we hear the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. The moment we believe in that gospel, we are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. What's the gospel? It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It tells us how that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures. How did he die, Alan? You know how he died. He shed his blood. Right now, he didn't bleed to death. Right. He gave up the spirit, but he shed his blood. Right. Then he was buried. Right. And then Jesus Christ rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. And then the resurrected Jesus Christ came to the Apostle Paul. Alan, you know this. Stand strong. He came to the Apostle Paul, the resurrected Jesus Christ, and gave him a revelation. He gave him a revelation of the sealing of the promised Holy Spirit. He gave him these revelations, okay? And, and you know these things. Don't let these people 
bag you down to get you to think you crazy because you're not. You have brothers out here. I'm here for you because I know you trust in the gospel, right? These other people, these charismatic movement people, the so-called brothers, they're not your brother. That guy who you were talking to, he's not your brother. He's not. Because it seemed like all these people trust in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but don't trust in, the, in Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. They don't do that. Speaking in tongues, it was a gift identifying that someone was uh, uh, possessed the Holy Spirit to the Jews, right? But in order for them to have the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune God, in order for them to have the Holy Spirit, watch this. During that time, they must uh, uh, be baptized in the name of Jesus in water. That's what Peter said. Then they receive the Spirit. And then you go on to the book of Acts, you'll see how it transitioned. The book of Acts is a transitional book. It transitioned from Peter to Paul, from water baptism, watch this, to spiritual baptism. You see what I'm saying? So when you say speaking in tongues, you cannot omit the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one that gives utterance. You know what I'm saying? To speak in tongues, you must have the Holy Spirit according to the Bible, and that's salvational. These folks are not speaking in tongues at all, and you know it. Look, take a look at this. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead run in you, quicken your mortal body. My God, I feel fire. I feel fire in this place. I tell you, there's fire in this place. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, see, that's the Spirit of the Lord. That's the power of God coming on you. That's the anointing of God. It's a radical last day anointing. It's an end day anointing, an end time anointing. There it is, 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 you calling it out. See, y'all was going through Paul. Y'all was going through Corinthians and all that. But let's, let's get something understood, Alan. What is tongues, right? The Bible is clear. Tongues is a sign. It's a sign. Watch this. The Bible also states that the Jews require a sign. Every time in the Bible, when you see someone speaking in tongues, a Jew was always present. Nowhere in Scripture. Alan, you know this, bro. I'm with you. But you can't apologize about the truth. You got to stand strong. Stand strong. You know that's wickedness. You know it. You know it. Every time the, the Bible shows someone speaking in tongues, watch this. A Jew was always present. Always present. Not one time in scripture where you see a Gentile or a Jew speaking in tongue. Hey, watch this. A Jew was not present. <laughs> that's because a tongue is a sign and the Jews require a sign Alan not us for we walk by faith not by sight we don't require a sign we believe by faith faith in the eternal God in heaven Jesus Christ in his death burial and resurrection and the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 and a quarter it tells us where to put that faith in put our faith in the blood of Christ, in the blood of Christ. You see, this charismatic movement is demonic. It gets people to, to lean on their experiences or their so-called experiences. Oh, look what Paul said. Paul said, don't forbid speaking in tongue. See, I go to my private prayer clouds and I speak in tongue. And what does that mean? What does that mean? You can pray to God in your native language. In your native language. What, you got some kind of special power you want? No, it's, it's called pride. You really think you're doing something because you, you think 
you praying in tongues, and, and tongues is a language, uh, speaking in a language that you don't speak, by the way. It's not some um, mystery language. The only how it's a mystery is when you, if I'm speaking English and nobody in the room speaks English, right, they speak Spanish, and I get to praying in English, it's a mystery to them. Only God understand me because I'm. he's the only one that can understand English. Everybody else don't understand English. They speak, they speak Spanish. So it would be a mystery if I get to praying in the spirit, in my native language, to anybody, watch this, that doesn't speak my language. Alan, you know this. Don't back down. Listen, stand up. You see, Satan attacks with unexpected sources. Satan attacks with unexpected sources, man. He'll use the people that's close to you. He'll use friends and family. For men, he like to use friends, close friends at that, to attack you, to tear down the gospel. No, preach and teach the gospel, Alan. Preach and teach the truth of the gospel. Preach it. Preach the gospel. Satan will use them, that dude, whoever it was, use that dude to tear down the truth of the gospel. He attacks from unexpected sources. That's what he did with Judas. The Bible says that Jesus trusted Judas. Alan, you know this. That was Judas was Jesus' close friend. Satan used him. Uh, Peter, the same way. Satan used him in a sense, right? Satan attacks with and, 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 and unexpected sources, man. And you got to identify. You ain't got to hold hands and, and shake their hand. You ain't got to be friends with these people, man. Trust in the gospel. You know what I'm saying? And watch this. And find men and women that's of, of the same faith. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that Watch this. We are managers of the mysteries of God. That's our title. We are ministers of Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? It says that, watch this. It says that we are ministers of the New Testament. I don't got to go back to Jude 120, which they totally, man, that, it was one guy. It's a light-skinned guy. I, I, uh, I'll forget his name uh, that you was, you was talking with, and, and, and I was scrolling uh, uh, on YouTube, and he popped up a little short. Uh, what's the dude's name? I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not into this. This I, I didn't know these YouTube Christian folks had all this, you know, all this, um, this warring with each other. But it was one. I think I don't know. Um, I think his name Mark, um, something like that. I'm not, I'm not for sure. But he said that you got to be sealed with the Spirit. And there's a difference between being sealed and being filled on, on a YouTube short or something like that. But, but, but he went back to Acts chapter nine and he and, and brought up baptism. He didn't say the whole verse in Ephesians 1.13. <laughs> and, and you got to get away from these people, man. He's sitting there saying that, that he's, he called you a false teacher. He called you a false, and you're not, right? But it's not him or it's the other, the other guy that, that, that you were sitting down with. It is, watch this, it's the principalities in the unseen world manipulating and deceiving these people, man. That dude sit down and called you a false teacher, but yeah, he's sitting down with braids in his hair. Didn't Paul say it's shameful for a man to have um, long hair? Right? So miss me with all this. It's, it's, it's a, I didn't know that these YouTube Christians are really like this. No, share the gospel. Share the truth. Share 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Tell them how Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scripture. Tell them how he was buried. Tell them how he rose again the third day according to the scriptures to atone for your sins. And that is it. All this tongue stuff, they are never, ever accepting. What they're trying to do, they're trying to shut you up. They're trying to shut you up. And you got to stand tall, man. I'm here in Dallas. I'm, I'm here in Dallas. You see what I'm saying? I'm here with you. Stand strong. You know what praying in the spirit is. There ain't no speaking no gibberish or speaking in an unknown language. Praying in tongue is praying through the Holy Spirit in your own native language, man. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on. Don't let them bag you in the corner. Stop trying to frame these dudes, man. Stop trying to frame these dudes. Stop it. You got brothers out here. You got brothers who, who trust in the gospel, who's waiting for the hope of glory. Jesus Christ, to come rapture the church. That's me. I'm one of them. I go outside all the time. Where he at? He, hey, Christ might be here today, y'all. I'm one of them. What is tongues? What they got to do with anything? Prophesying in tongues has ceased, according to the scripture. I heard you say that, Alan, you said um, in your video, you said, um, 
um, you can't find a scripture where it, it, it um, definitely shows that tongues and prophesying has ceased. Alan, it has. I can, and I'll show you. I'll show you. If you ever watch this video, reach out to me. I'll show you several scriptures where you'll, it'll be unequivocal to you that prophesying in tongues has ceased. <laughs> it's been ceased, actually, for a while. For a long time. You see what I'm saying? Trust in the gospel, Alan. Trust in the gospel. I can go on and on and on, but it was so funny how that guy sitting here and said, man, if you just give them some um, chapters or some, well, I think it was three verses or three chapters, I don't know what it was, something like that. And, and, they, and they read it, you know, some strange, they read it. You know, what would you think they get out of it? Come on, man. Paul said to Timothy 2 and 15, study. The, the first thing that person, if somebody was to give them that, the first thing that come out of their mouth should be this. Study this book. Study it. Don't just read it. Study it according to 2 Timothy 2 and 15. A laborer, a laborer, a toil in it. A laborer, workmen needed not to be ashamed. Don't be ashamed, Alan. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on, man. Marcus, that's his name. Marcus, that's his name. He get up talk. He do all that talking on, on this on this little clip. And come on, man. These dudes, are, these dudes, man, do they trust in the gospel? It's not like they trust in speaking in tongues more than anything. So they they trust in and the miracles and powers of God. Jesus Christ walking. Why, oh, okay. Jesus Christ walking on water. Jesus Christ raising the dead. Watch this. Jesus Christ healing the sick. Huh? Don't save you. Watch this. You so-called speaking in tongue. You so-called praying in tongue. Watch this. Don't save you. You see what I'm saying? This is a salvational issue. Because when you attach tongues to the Holy Spirit, you are, you are saying that this is uh, 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 salvational. And it's not. It's not. <laughs> Trust in the gospel. And the Bible says you are then sealed. The moment you hear the word of truth, Ephesians 1.13, the gospel of your salvation. What's the gospel? It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. That's the gospel. That's the gospel I preach. That's the gospel I teach. That's the gospel I share. That's the gospel I got from our apostle today, the apostle Paul which was given to him by the resurrected Jesus Christ in a revelation. And the apostle Paul went back to the, to, to the other apostles and told them about the revelation he received. And he got into it with them. You see what I'm saying? Stop holding hands, Alan. Man up. It's time to man up, bro. It's time to man up. You ain't by yourself, though. You have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you, man. And you got other brothers here that you don't know. But they out here, you can inbox me anytime. You can, you, you can email me. You can. I hope that you hear this. I hope that, that you understand that you're not wrong. The only thing where you violated it is apologizing about the truth. You opened that, your video up correctly. You called out that wickedness. Call that mess out. The Satan and his demonic forces, they... They pretend to be righteous ministers and, and angels of light. And they move in the charismatic movement. Touching and laying on the hands, you fall in, touch your head and you don't fell out on the ground. And they got to throw a blanket over you because your private parts are showing. That ain't of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, you laughing and something, you're drunk in the spirit and you're laughing. Aha, speaking in, in gibberish. That ain't the Holy Spirit. Come on, man. Ain't nobody giving sight to the blind. You know this. Ain't nobody raising the dead. They lying. Now, I'm not saying God can't do miraculous things because he can, but it's according to his will. It's God's will for those things to happen only on his time and when he want to. You see what I'm saying? When Jesus Christ was in the, in, in, in the early church was doing that stuff, watch this. It was to build the church. It was to build it, to lay the foundation. You see what I'm saying? Come on, Alan. Get up. Say, you need to get away from them dudes, man. 
You need to get away from them, dude. You need to forget some uh, doggone subscribers. Forget the subscribers. We're not talking subscribers. We're talking truth. You don't forgot that. You don't forgot the truth. You trying to hang on to subscribers. Tell them the truth that the Holy Spirit has revealed to you, man. Tell them the truth. Continue to call out that wickedness. Call it out. You know it's wicked. They know it's wicked. But they want to feel like they done done something. They want to feel an experience. They want to feel salvation is not an experience. It's a, it's a true belief. And belief in Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection alone and nothing else. And watch this. You don't feel nothing. <laughs> There's not a feeling. You got to trust. You got to trust in the gospel. You got to trust in the gospel. Put your faith in the blood of Christ. That's how you are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. And you know you're sealed. Watch this. Because in the book of Galatians, it tell you, start, it tell you the fruits of the spirit. That's how you know when the fruits of the spirit. Ah, love. Ah, peace. Ah, give me that joy. Ah, yes. Ah, self-control. Oh, yes, sound mind. You know what I'm saying? All these different things just get to hidden, right? These are fruits of the Spirit. You see what I'm saying? And we are commanded to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? We are, we are commanded to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You understand the difference? We are commanded to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And ain't no speaking in, in tongues. Tongue ain't nothing but an unknown language, a language that you don't speak. That's it. Oh, my goodness. And that has stopped, by the way. That has ceased. And Alan, I'll show I know you don't probably agree with me on that, but that has, and I'll show you. Continue to call out that wickedness, man, because Satan is using this charismatic movement to, to, to usher in the Antichrist. He's trying to usher in the Antichrist through that wave, and there's going to be a lot of people in hell, a whole bunch of them, because they don't trust in the gospel. All you hear, tongue this, tongue that. Who cares about a dog on tongue? What a, is, is a speaking the tongue going to get you in heaven? Is speaking in tongue going to wash your sin away? No, -uh, only the Holy Spirit washes and regenerates you according to Titus. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? Ephesians 1.13, the moment you hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the moment you believe in that gospel, you are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. What's the gospel? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. You see what I'm saying? Give me a Bible. Give me a Bible, somebody. Give me a Bible. Let me, let me read that. Give me a Bible. Let me read the gospel. I'm going to read the whole gospel because this is sad. Give me, a, give me a Bible. 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's, let's, let's hear the gospel. You know better, Adam. You know, man. You stand on the, stand on the truth. I don't know these dudes. I, I, I can care less what they think about me. I love them, so I'm going to tell them the truth. You're wrong, bro. No, you're, I don't agree with you nowhere. No. No, we ain't no disagree to agree. The Bible don't tell you to disagree to agree. Jesus never disagreed to agree, man. Stand on the truth. And it's not aggression, it's passion. I'm a very passionate passionate, very passionate Bible teacher because I just so, so thirst and, and, and trust in the finished works of Jesus Christ and nothing else. I know it ain't me. I know it ain't nothing I say or do. It's only through the blood of Christ that I'm saved. And I'm so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Here's the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let me get to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you. This is a declaration. Which, watch this. Which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. You teach them that on your channel. Teach them to trust in the gospel. So that way 
that can be sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing else. Now, the mother, these, these guys, this Marcus guy and this other guy, man, you need to stay away from them. They don't believe. They don't believe. There's no disagree to agree. He said, you trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ or you don't? And the only way you will have the Holy Spirit is by trusting in the gospel. That is it. Speaking in tongues don't even matter. Why are we discussing that? What, what is that? What, why is speaking in tongues, why does that matter? You mean to tell me God can't answer your prayers in, a, in your native language? You mean to tell me that if you speak in tongue, in, I mean, if you pray in tongues, so-called praying tongues, which is uh, some kind of unknown language, as you say, that God is going to, what he going to do, um, the praying in tongues going to expedite your prayer or, or the devils can't understand and hear your prayer or all this witchcraft you speaking? Come on, man. Are you serious? Come on. Did Jesus pray in tongue? Did Jesus pray in tongue? Did Jesus have a, 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 a prayer language in tongue that, that nobody understood? Come on, man. Let's go. You know better. Don't apologize to these folks. They're wicked. They are wicked. And I know this your friend. I mean, I don't know him. But based off, that, based off what I saw, that's wickedness. He didn't mention the gospel. It's like he was defending wickedness. He, he defending all that charismatic stuff. Look, look, look at this. Look. And so, Alan, this is where I think um, for my charismatic brothers and sisters that dearly love your teaching, and love what you do with the YouTube channel and love your desire to be balanced. I think some of that previous video in, in terms of you opening with the praying in tongues and that kind of stuff, I don't, I don't think that was very befitting of you to, to do that in, in that in light of that verse, because we could sit here, we could disagree, we can get scholars, we can go back and forth, but it, it could almost come off like you're forbidding speaking in tongues when you know you, you admitted it that through scripture, we can kind of dice it either way. So I would just encourage you brother, like God's given you such a unique ministry and such a unique position uh, to, to, to potentially help have more of these conversations that I would not have done that. Like I would not have opened in that way because it, 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 it comes off like it's, it's forbidding. It comes off as if it's not, it's not helpful. And so with that, I've never been in church where I felt peer pressured to pray in tongues. I've never been in a church where it, it, like when it happened, Alan, for me, it just genuinely happened. I didn't have control over it. It just happened. And, and it was, it was, it was something else. And, um, Anyway, so thank you for doing that. Shigamo. Tevre ma ombo brave dis to cinema hunted ke. In ge und et genando dog sisik pukukla na membre menesto. Stello gla hamalana le lo lendile engren in stelets karatak. How can you defend that? How can you defend that? Are you serious? <laughs> How can you defend that? Oh, oh, I'm not like that. I experienced man. Quiet. Stop all that talking. You polluting the gospel, bro. Be happy you talk to Alan. Be happy was Alan. <laughs> be, be excited that you talk to Alan. Be excited. Because I'm... No, I, I defend the gospel. I don't care about your experiences. What does the Bible say? What does the original language say? How in the world can you understand the scriptures when you don't understand the original language that it was written in? And you're going to down talk that? It's ludicrous, bro. It's asinine. Seriously. It's crazy. It's crazy. The Bible was written in Greek and Hebrew, and you're going to turn a shoulder to that? Come on, man. That's why we got to study. That's not our language. We're Gentiles. We're Gentiles. That's why Paul told us to study. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Keep going, Alan. Man, I, I, hope you, I hope you see this video. If you ever see this video, tag Alan in this. Tag all of them in it. Tag all of them in it. I don't know these dudes. You know, I hope that they will believe in the gospel. If they trust in the gospel, then I know the truth will be revealed to them. And then we, it won't be a, a conversation about tongues. It'll be a conversation about, man, hey, let's share the gospel. 
Let's tell people about Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Let's get off this feel-good stuff. Let's share the gospel. You see what I'm saying? I, so I, I hope we, I hope we get this. I hope we get it. Till next time.